I see none. Okay, let's say one minute, one more minute, and then I'll start with the presentation. Good, let's start. So, hello from my side. Welcome to our very first uh, webinar from Principia. So, uh, it's a great honor for me to be here as, a, as your host. My name is Stefan and I'm CEO of uh, Principia MBS. Uh, today, we're going to talk about how to speed up your design validation process uh, together with in combination with multi-body simulation in Onshape. Um, and we have a use case, so agricultural engineering at Knoche Maschinenbau, and we'll also have uh, an interview. So this is the agenda for today. I'll introduce our company and myself, then uh, I'll show you what it's about. So what is the app? Uh, what is Onshape? What is uh, our Principia app? Then we'll go to the interview session, so where we are going to take make the interview with Jörg uh, Knoche and Arne Hachfeld from Knoche Maschinenbau. And uh, then I'll give you some background in multibody dynamics and simulation. And afterwards, we have time for some questions and answers. So let's start. What is our company about? So, Principia, the name of Principia is um, has to be read in that way that is uh, like Newton's book, Principia Mathematica. So, we are somehow related to. Research, our team is, comes from research, so we've chosen uh, a company name like that. So that's why we are called Principia. The foundation of our company was early 2023, but we are we have a background much longer history, much longer history. So it goes 10 years back where we, the core team, has uh, knowledge or uh, got knowledge in multi-body dynamics. So we ourselves see as a solution provider for design validation tools integrated in CAE platforms, and our first platform is uh, on-chain. So we are generally experts in, on the one hand, numerical solvers for modeling dynamical systems and algorithms for dynamical analysis for both rigid systems, but also flexible ones in future. So, but we have the knowledge here. Then we are experts in UI and UX design, so we want to provide a very handy app solution that is easy to use. And we also have expertise in web development, which is necessary for providing a web browser-based solution. Some uh, background to myself. So my name is Stefan Oberbergsteiner. My education started with a technical college, so I've got background in CAD design. So I also did some work here in, in the design space, but then I switched over to the University of Applied Sciences here in Austria, where I did my master in mechanical engineering. And after that, I did my PhD at the Technical University of Vienna in mechanics, where I did research in the field of inverse dynamics and multibody dynamics. So basically my competences are in engineering, CAD design, solid mechanics and simulation tools but also more and more method development and software development in C++. All right, so starting with a poll would be a good idea. So I'd like to know from you, which industry do you work in? So first one would be the agricultural equipment, or second, automation and robotics, third, production machines, or some other category. So you should see now a poll 
pop up uh, in your Microsoft Teams environment, and then you should be able to choose um, category. So please do a poll. I think 30 seconds uh, should be enough. So let's see how does this work. It's also kind of new for us, right? It looks like that it works. So some more seconds. Um, currently, we see that we have a 38% in automation uh, and robotics. So most of you obviously is working in this area. 30%, 13% in agricultural equipment, 25% in production machines, and some 25% in other categories. So a mix of uh, different application areas where Principia can be used in all of these categories. Somehow different approaches that have to be done here, but um, it is something that is um, useful in all these three categories and also others. So we could extend this to much longer list like automotive or biomechanics, etc. So what is now Principia? What is our first product and our first uh, approach to a CIE platform like Onshape? So this, what you see here on, on my screen, is uh, Principia, our app in Onshape. So you see the screen, the, the well-known screen of Onshape, which is the online browser-based cat. And on the right, you can open up um, additional, call it earlier, they were called plugins. Right now we name them app, apps. So you can open this app and then <clears throat> such a window pops up and you see um, here's something uh, for modeling. So you take over all the uh, informations from an on-shape assembly. So that's important. We work on on-shape assemblies and we take over bodies with inertia information and all the mate connectors, mate features, and we make a basic kinematic model out of it. And then for uh, enabling real kinetics and dynamics, we add some additional elements like forces. So we have some predefined uh, force categories and we extend them, extend those, uh, this set uh, on a regular basis. So this uh, list of features will be more and more. And what's important here, you only have to um, in, give inputs that are, so there are, is hardly any input you need to type in like geometry uh, based things like locations and orientations. We reuse on shape made connectors here. So you can pick them by clicking on a button, pick them in the on shape uh, assembly view, or you have a drop down where you can choose those um, made connectors. And then you have some basic settings for the, in this case, forces um, and how is the trajectory, for example, in this case, it's an hydraulic cylinder. And then you're done with forces. Another thing that is important for uh, dynamics models is, of course, the output. What should be the output? It's most of the time not only a nice animation, but uh, you're most of the time interested in some numeric data. And that's why we also have sensors. You see them here. So you can measure any distances, velocities, angles, angular velocities, etc. And that's basically the setting of a model. And if you click Start Simulation, you run a job. And then um, you can view the animation and see all the details, and we'll see some results later in our case study. So wrapping up, Principia is an app currently available in the OnShape App Store. We released our first version in uh, July this year. It's fully integrated, so it's no other tab. It's just a side panel that is opened in your well-known on-chip environment. And in a first step, it closes somehow the gap between the on-chip assembly and the integrated on-chip simulation tool, because you can create loads 
that can be applied on your own shape simulation uh, assembly. It can compute dynamic loads, forces, and torques for any specific uh, interface of any part of your mechanism. So all these made features uh, are imported and you can create any uh, loads that are acting in these interfaces. That's the current state of our app. And now it's a pleasure for me to introduce uh, my interview guests. So we would like to show you a use case how Principia can really be used in a practical example. That's why I introduce uh, Mr. Jörg Knoche and Anne Hachfeld from uh, Knoche Maschinenbau. And in the next couple of minutes, uh, guys, we are talking about uh, what we've done together and what you've done so far with our app. So hi, and thank you for joining us. <laughs> okay. So, so we are online now? Yeah. You're online, yes, we can hear okay. you. Okay, so, hello. hello everybody, um, nice to meet you. My name is Jörg Knoche, uh, and next to me is Arne Hachfeld. Uh, he's mainly used uh, the, the tool, your tool in, in the construction process. Just a, a, some short words to our company. We are a family owned uh, medium sized company in Lower Saxony near Hanover. We are manufacturing passive soil cultivation equipment uh, on about 20,000 square meters, which are 5,000 square meters under roof. So we have 45 dedicated employees. We've been existing a little bit longer. We exist from 1790, so over 230 years now, we are in this business. Right from the start, we developed our own ma 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 machines, so to say, and we practice and continue it till today. It's not just a tool, it's also our ideas that matter to us, but also the tool that make our ideas feasible for production. When our machines are out in the field, we constantly enhance and optimize them based on practical usage and feedback. So we distribute our machines uh, worldwide through sales partners and retailers, and uh, we have several, oh, yeah, and you, you see my, uh, we have several machine groups, so to say. So there's a short disk arrow, you can see my, my no, you can't see that. No? Or but I can package it. So this is the okay. So the see the short disk arrows. Then we have disk arrows beside. Um, this is the new residential plant shreddering. This is very yeah. It's it's a new machine line cultivators. We have chisels. We have rollers. We have seedbed preparation and harrows. So that's what we have available. It's from one meter to twelve point two meters. And it's from around 100 kilos to about eight tons in weight for for these machines. So, really now, nice. thank you, thank you for for the explanations to your product line. Um, so it's very impressive and it's really really a uh, good, yeah, uh, uh, say, richtige Maschinenbau in Deutsch. So really uh, uh, classical machinery equipment construction. Um, so. And I was impressed from the very first beginning of our uh, conversation. So please, could you just tell me how did our contact came about? Because it's probably some interesting for, for the others. Uh, yeah. How, how yeah. does this work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, it, it's um, fair outside here, the Hannover Messer. And there we were invited uh, from Armshape to a, a Principia presentation outside the fairground. So. We are immediately impressed by the, so, and th there you showed us how it works. It was a, a demonstration uh, in a restaurant with, with nice food. So thank you for that. And uh, well, I think it was the Orange team who, who did that. And there we were very impressed how easy it was to implement your tools in realistic movement in on shape drawings like that. Or on shape models, yeah. So I think. I have it with me. What was uh, the impressive thing? So, so you know it. <laughs> it's the same yeah. thing I showed to you. So I, yeah. had a I had a garlic press with me and just showed the the participants at this event what yeah. should be a multi-body system because there's hardly anyone who knows what's multi-body dynamics yeah. uh, because it's such an 
a niche, there's more the finite element guys, but prior to finite elements, I always state that there should be some analysis of a system yeah. in order to, to get yeah. insights of your system. So uh, also for the, 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 the moment when we realized how, how this would be transferable to our models, that was like like a, yeah, a kickoff or something like that. So yeah. this is inspired us very much because it, yeah, these are all same problems we do have. And, so, you know, um, and, and then, you, then there was the moment, so how, how did you find out that exactly this topic of dynamic simulation would be beneficial? So you probably had some, some yeah, machine had, uh, in mind. Yeah, we, 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 when you see all our machines, they work on the fields and what we always have is that we have a, a problem folding them from transport to the um, from the from the streets to the fields. So we always have connections, hinges, we have hydraulic cylinders, we, we have to use kinematics to be in three meter. So when you have a 12 point two meter machines on the field, how do you fold it to three meter on the road? So it's like the garlic press. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't squeeze squeeze <laughs> things, but we have to fold and unfold. So this was the moment where we realized, oh, that could be very good. So, so. I, I also remember a moment in a discussion where we talked about how to find out, for example, optimal parameters of hero disks in regards of how the direction of throw could be that the residual plants will pile up in in a row or something. So that's something that's probably in future, but the, the yeah. I think one of the, the findings was in your case, that is also applicable. So our solution is also applicable at this stage because there are many uh, possibilities to apply also on very, say, uh, simple kinematics where there are many questions uh, arising from these foldings and stuff. So it doesn't have to be the most complex uh, thing like including other Things like how does uh, residual plants are throwing are thrown around, but there's also these uh, things like like folding. So that's also yeah. very very interesting in, in in this beginning. So starting the process of simulation can be done right away, and with Principius evolving, I'm 100% sure we can also deal with uh, the simulations of these uh, residual plants. Yeah. All right. So let's let's see what was the actual uh, machine. So can you please uh, explain what was the the joint project and and, and can you explain? Yeah, yeah, I explained. This is one of our new machines. It's a foldable uh, six meter short disc harrow, and also what we have there. Um, normally we fold it in another principle, principle. But with this and when we fold with the old principle. Uh, we could only fold till six meter machines. So this machine should be more to six meter. So we fold it straight away, um, just 90 degrees, so to say. And to fold it 90 degrees, not the problem, but to have it back and lined up for the field accurate, very accurate, because we work very shallow. And so we you want a very accurate deepness all over the machine. So we had to, um, fold the sides, but also um, um, to to put them in the right position at an end stop. And we were not sure how many forces and how this could be, how many cylinders we knew uh, uh, need. So we wanted to simulate this kinematic and also the stop we have to use. We wanted to to have a, an idea of a force before we go to the field and break the machine. So that was. <laughs> So okay, so then then you started with this machine we see on the picture. So uh, and just so we, yeah. few words. What 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 did how did the, the the implementation or what did the implementation look like? So how did we started our our joint project? Uh, so, which yeah we, we it was very simple. So we just we had this machine model on the right. So we said to you we have this in on shape and you said oh no problem. Just give me two clicks, and you <laughs> you can put your your measurements. You can put your stops. You can put your cylinders working on this model. And this was, uh, yeah, it was just a simple coordination, just a simple click.
click and we could work uh, or Anna could work because <laughs> it's his job to <laughs> to do that. Uh, and that from that, that side it was very very simple we didn't have to change our our work progress we just put another simple with a with a simple click we put just a new work process in without changing uh, the the, um, uh, the 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 program without mm -hmm. Uh, importing without saying, oh, we've changed here something. Is the import model the right model? And so it was. It was was very very easy. So, yeah. So in in, in this case, uh, there's also the the benefit from OnShape that you just have to send a, a share link to some some support guys like me uh, and say, hey, um, I tried this like you 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 explained me, but it doesn't work. And then with the share link and the right settings for the share link, it's uh, a matter of say minutes if if the person the support person is available at our side uh then you you have the answers um to to uh to to proceed with your work yeah, one that's... thing that that was uh, a challenge for us here uh this is something to mention this is a welding construction so all the parts are modeled as so all the the sheet metal parts are of course one part in on shape so basically we have a system with more or less two degrees of freedom, the folding structure, but we have many, many um, parts in the model because they're all separate parts and glued or fixed together. So that's something that's uh, in, in multi-body dynamics, some kind, not of a problem, but it it is uh, more work to do. But um, yeah, as I said, you gave us a challenge and Principia can all, also handle this. So you don't have to reduce or minimize uh, to, to Optimize the model in order to get a simulation result. You can just use the the, pro, the the version of the design in CAD you do you you, you normally do, and no specialized simulation CAD model, which is kind of beneficial in terms of uh, when it starts to rotate. So when you have to do some iteration cycles. All right, so uh, that that would have been the picture. Um, you you mentioned so these are the the end stops right yeah this, this is the important the... part and how how do we uh, we have to fix the uh, the lengths and also with these uh, the forces that uh, we have a one line fixed machine and this was one important part how we build up the console how we how we weld it so and and how how strong we have to build it yeah that was so, so and, uh, this was for us. For us, normally we we or yeah we make prototypes and then they break and then they say okay there's more force. So here we have, um, we hope we have uh, the best reliable uh, point uh, or strength uh, constructive uh, now. Yeah. So as you said, these these are the, the the specific benefits from from using the app to not only have guesses but to have uh, in a very early stage you can generate forces by simple clicks you just uh, have to deal with say real world parameters like that from the hydraulic cylinder if you know the the, the pressure and the piston area you can uh, go for the maximum force and then you can say yes i've got this trajectory for the hydraulic cylinders and then they fold out and press against your your end stop so that that's basically the thing you searched for and and i've got another slide here yeah. what with the video so what's probably something you already uh, you, you you are interested to was uh the hydraulic cylinder itself isn't it so if yeah. you have a, a quick check uh of the hydraulic also for these yeah also for the for the geometrics also for for these uh, that's very very you know very simple to check first and to see yeah that was great so yeah so Big thanks to, to you. So really nice yeah. to have you here in, in, in our interview and uh, have a look into uh, yeah, real machinery and real pictures. Uh, so we work together in, in future, so we will hear from, from each other, uh, of course, in the next uh, time. Yeah. And uh, if there yeah, are any th questions, I think if there are any questions regarding to your uh, specific uh, implementation, uh, they can also be, uh, be asked here in, in, in this webinar and you stay with us at the next couple of minutes and probably we answer yeah. them later. Yeah. So th th thank, thank you for, for letting us showing these and um, 
just just to, to to make one 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 mind or one mindset that we we think is is very is is very good on principally that yeah you you know we we have to make a lot of um a lot of prototype and testing in the field and we we hope to reduce this and to be more and and i think we are on, on a good way there and also with with your tool so we can reduce our our um our field tests from let's say three to five field tests to maybe one or two and that would speed us up and also would give us uh, yeah good um advantage to the market and to the other uh, concurrents we, we, we do have. So thank you. We'll stay here. We will answer questions and we are now listen further to your <laughs> to, to, to your vortrag. Sorry. <laughs> Just thank sometime. you once again. So great to have you here. So we all know. <laughs> all right. So uh... Now I, I would have before starting with multi-body dynamics, I have another poll for you. So I'd like to know which uh, methods for design validation did you already know um, up to now? So finite elements method, uh, second one would be computational fluid dynamics, then multi-body dynamics, the thing I'm talking about today, and discrete element method. So I have to check all four of them. How messing up the poll when I do this, but of course I'm okay. So, <laughs> um, multi body dynamics is well known, this looks like. So, uh, there's hardly anyone knowing uh, discrete element analysis, uh, which is. Uh, no surprise for me, but it would be a very good tool, especially in combination with multi-body dynamics. Probably this could be another topic for a webinar, but not today. And uh, so there's a equal standing for finite elements and computational fluid dynamics. All right, so there are many of you knowing uh, what's multi-body dynamics. That's cool. Um, but I'd like to uh, go for an explanation and what we understand uh, with multi-body dynamics. That's why uh, this slide here. So what is multi-body dynamics? With multi-body dynamics, you can study basically motion and the behavior of interconnected mechanical system. In, in finite elements, so uh, you do not in a, in a first shoot, you do not search for uh, the motion of uh, interconnected um, systems. In multi-body dynamics, this is the main thing. You are analyzing the whole system or subsystems of it. And what you are interested in is only one hand trajectories, so the motion itself, but also forces and interactions between those bodies. You can gain insights into the full system behavior, so does the fold frame fold out, or in this example below, does the, the landing gear of an airplane really work like it should with the applied forces, or is there any problem with a hydraulic cylinder? Is there a force too low, etc.? You can evaluate the performance. So dynamics, of course, is always related to uh, correctness in time. So you can see, does it really move in the time I want it to? have it so the performance of a system can be evaluated issues can be identified but this is really the same like uh, um, yeah as i told you with this um, main landing gear does it work or not is there an issue is there a collision uh, throughout the motion and then of course for optimization tasks for optimizing components and parameters you can go for uh, and, and look is a screw really optimally used so is it could it couldn't it be a, a lower dimension of the screw if you know the interface forces you can do this what is multi-body dynamics not on the right side that is always very important to know it is not finite element analysis so in multi-body dynamics we basically do not go for 
details in the structural behavior. So stresses and strains within the structure are not the main target here. Although flexibility can be integrated in multibody dynamics, but more for the dynamical behavior, not for stress analysis. So if you want to know, does this part or body um, withstand the loads, you have to go for finite elements. But the thing here is, most of the time you need loads from a dynamical analysis. So in a first step, there is multi-body dynamics, and in a second step, you can use some peak loads, some forces out of it in uh, finite element analysis. And we cannot deal with heat transfer or thermoelastic behavior and fatigue analysis. We can give inputs to this, but this is not integrated in, in multi-body dynamics. And for analyzing any flow behavior, there is also no need for multi-body dynamics. So computational fluid dynamics, um, where you analyze the flow of fluids, gases or liquids, or some interactions between fluids and structures, this is not part of multi-body dynamics. This is something special. So, and in order to, to clarify this again, so we have three typical tasks for multi-body dynamic tools. So the one thing is functional checking. So we can, uh, enable virtual testing and go for uh, a look if the function really um, is fulfilled. Then we can do part scaling of, or scaling of parts and standard machinery parts, or the load generation as we just talked about for finite elements. So for functional checking, this could look like that here in this example, where you can see, is there any collision? Are the, the server motors uh, strong enough to, to provide the trajectory or to, to, to follow the trajectory? Um, etc. This this would be in our understanding functional checking checking. So this is more some kind of a visual check. Does it really work? And the second thing here is scaling parts, which which could look like that. So you have the standard screw comp computation where you have to go for yeah. What are the loads uh, in in the interface you are screwing together? So you can dimension or scale the screw. You can do this for uh, bearings and you can do this for this type of, uh, of parts. So like uh, interface joints like this um, uh, ball bearings. Another thing here, not only the loads, but also the misalignment can be checked in a multi-body dynamics simulation. And the third part, of course, is generating loads for other types of computations like finite element analysis. So this is an example here from a, um, a gear shift uh, um, actuator. So just a, a, a lever structure where there are several rods in between, and then you go for uh, uh, many different configurations, go for a simulation and go for stresses and strains in this part. All right, so that are our, in our case, we, we call them the three main tasks of multi-body dynamics. And now you should be interested in multi-body dynamics and the next steps to do this with Principia, if you are an on-ship user, they're very simple. So first thing, go to the on-ship app store and then search for the for Principia. Uh, currently, I think we are we are featured and on top of the list, but if not, go to the category simulation and you uh, see our app and you can subscribe uh, to the free 30 day subscription. And in the four steps, you our app adds in the assembly view and you should see our icon, which looks like that, in an assembly tab uh, on the right. And if you click on this icon, Principia opens up and imports your current assembly. If there's no assembly, uh, of course, Principia will be empty too. If you have a well-defined um, kinematic system or could also be a simple one, one body system that just falls under gravity, you can go for it and directly test our app. So that's all from, from my side, from the webinar. Um, so uh, my presentation ends here and now it's up to you. If you have any questions, please uh, ask them. We are open uh, for any questions now. If there is no question, 
let me just say thank you for your attention and for being part of this webinar. And uh, I hope we see you soon. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to us via our, our channels. You're open for any question and for collaboration and support. Thank you. So there was one question from Thomas, and he asked, how long uh, uh, have you, Jörg, been working with Onshape already? So we, we we worked a long time, but Arne is, is not so long in this. Uh, how long did you work now on Onshape? Uh, just uh, the, the, the whole year, 23. Uh, yeah, I started in general with uh, as, a, uh, as we're a small company, we, we didn't have a big uh, CLD system and we we looked uh, till, till 2050 for a system and then we looked for new um, um, engineers to work with and he 2000, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, 2023. Was 2023, he started to model from scratch up new models and so he didn't use it long and it's, it's it's very simple and a good tool yeah so i hope this is so we 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 started simple in 2015 or 2014 and 2022 i think no it was 2017 sorry and 23 arne started to to build up from scratch this model and yeah okay that's okay yeah Thank you. Yeah. We get another question. Okay, so James asks. Uh, uh, he's uh, he's from a robotics company in Canada, and he is wondering how does Principia handle large assemblies for mechanis mechanisms with many parts? Stefan, please. So. Basically, in, 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 in principle, we do not have any limit on parts. So that, that, can, that, that is the thing I can say. say. In multi-body dynamics, in the, in the say, community of multi-body dynamics, also in research, most of people are talking about up to 1,000 parts, but only really independently moving parts. So if you can glue them together or combine them together, uh, there is no no uh, separate part. So, but if there are thousand parts, each of them having six degrees of freedom in space, so six thousand degrees of freedom models, this is usually the largest multi-body dynamics model. I'd say that that is uh, that principally can also handle. But we do not have a, a fixed limit of parts. So you can try it, go for it, and 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 let the solver do what what you want. So probably you have to wait longer for your result, but uh, in terms of memory and stuff, you shouldn't have a problem. Okay, James, was that good enough? Okay, otherwise I could have uh, give you the the microphone as well. Okay. Okay, is there any other questions? Okay, if there's no more question, I think, Stefan, you uh, can come to an end. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, sir. If there is any question after this event, yeah, I think you know one of our channels to reach out to us either via LinkedIn or via email by our uh, webpage, principium-mbs.com. Uh, there is a link to support. You can also book demo and, and walkthroughs there. So shouldn't be a problem to reach out to us if there's any question arising in the future. So I see there was one, one typing. But I'd say let's come to an end. So thank you once again, Arne and, and Jörg, for, for the interview and for being part of this webinar. And thank you to chair. <laughs> Have a nice day. Bye. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.